When you take a walk through a grassland or a forest or another natural setting, it can be easy to think that that natural system is static, that it doesn't change much over time. But in fact, biological systems are always changing. And from the very start of a biological system, at the, as a glacier, say, retreats, um, leaving behind powdered rock, or after a major event like a forest fire, that biological system will undergo a period of change. And that change is called succession. And they're great examples of how biological systems change over time in predictable ways in response to these sorts of disturbances or in response to the um, creation of a new space for life to take off and flourish. So in this video, we're gonna look at succession and look at a couple of real world examples of where succession is taking place now. Hopefully by the end of this video, the next time you go for a walk, you'll be looking for not just what is staying the same, but what is changing in ecosystems. By the end of this video, you should know the difference between primary and secondary succession. You should be able to explain some of the factors that cause plant communities to change over time, and hopefully you'll be able to start seeing succession in natural ecosystems on your own. Dioxide, nutrients, water, seeds, and other factors. In a place like this Alpine Glacier, there's plenty of light, there's plenty of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and there are nutrients like phosphorus, calcium, and magnesium in the rock. What's missing from a place like this uh, is the nutrient nitrogen and seeds, because where would those come from? And so what happens is that the first organisms that appear in a site like this likely have seeds that are either carried on the wind and deposited on the glacier, somehow blown into the site, and or also have the ability to fix nitrogen from the air into forms that are used by plants. We'll talk about that more when we talk about ecological processes. If that starts in a site like this, and you came back to the same site 20 or 30 years later, you would likely see shrubs. And 20 or 30 years after that, there would likely be trees or shrubs, depending on the elevation. And this is a process that we call primary succession. Here's another example of primary succession from South Africa, where fresh beach sand is slowly colonized by plants. Over time, the plants will become more dense, the communities more diverse, and eventually you'll have a coastal fanbos ecosystem rich in a variety of unique plant species. Some years ago, I worked at a site like this, and we found that, at, that for many decades, the major source of nutrients to the plants actually came from the ocean in the form of small particles formed from crashing waves and carried by winds into these otherwise nutrient-poor sands. This allows the plants to grow and allows the communities to change over, the t over time. On the next slide, we'll look at an example of secondary succession from an avalanche path in the Colorado Rockies. So we're standing in a um, large avalanche debris field here to talk about something called ecological succession. Um, so first, let me tell you a little bit about what happened here. This is a, a big avalanche path off of Bertha Pass in Colorado. And two years ago in the winter of 1819, a massive slide released from this site. That slide came off from the top, came barreling down the side of the, the mountain, and then up over this other side, knocking down all of these trees, creating this incredible debris field behind us um, in this single event that reset this plant community. Um, now, avalanche fields like this are common in Colorado, and they're actually a really interesting example of what we call secondary succession. And the way that secondary succession works is it's basically a reset of the plant community structure in this, this site. So if you look up this valley right here, you see a real difference between the avalanche path and the surrounding forest. And that difference is driven by the physical conditions that changed when this giant avalanche came down. So imagine this wall of snow, this massive front, gust front out in front, knocks down all this vegetation from what was otherwise a mature forest. When it, that happens, it all of a sudden opens up the site for a lot of light. That light then allows a set of species to start growing underneath. Um, these are often called early successional species, and you can see them around me in this this video right here they start to grow they grow quickly they use all the nutrients that are freed up in the site um, but over time you start to see other plants come in 
aspen over here are an early successional species. But then eventually, like what you see in the background here, you'll get pine trees coming in if we don't have another avalanche in this site. And that sequence of early species replaced by the next species replaced by the next species is what we mean when we talk about succession. In this slide, you can see the formal definitions of primary and secondary succession. These two concepts are differentiated largely by whether or not there was another ecosystem or plant community in the location prior to some type of disturbance. Primary succession starts from bare rock or sand and usually takes many decades to reach as end state of shrubs or forests. Secondary succession starts after disturbance in sites where there are many seeds and lots of nutrients and soils. In a place like the avalanche path, disturbances like that avalanche may reset the community again and again, leaving that community in a constant state of change. Hopefully this video will have you looking at plant communities in a little different light. Although you can't often see it in front of you, most communities are going through some type of change and may be in one of these predictable stages of primary or secondary succession. These types of changes highlight why we often talk about a combination of biological community properties and physical factors like nutrients or light in natural systems. This is part of the definition of an ecosystem, a topic we'll explore in later videos. Next time you're out for a walk in a natural place, have a look around. See if you can see some, some of these signs of biological succession around you.